in the Old Testament were one of the, the Levites was one of the 12 tribes of Israel and their responsibility from God was to take care of God's temple and I think Paul has that idea of these high priests these Levites and doing their ministry for God in mind as he talks about how we are to live for God in that pretty familiar passage out of Romans 12. I want to read the first four verses out of it for you. He says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, 
I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way you worship him. Don't copy the behaviors and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. The idea here, I think, is that what Paul is, is trying to get at for the readers in Rome and for us is that we are to give our bodies to God. And when he says bodies, we normally think of just the physical being that we are. But what Paul is talking about when he uses that word body in the, the Old Testament understanding of it, it was kind of the totality of your life. Everything you do, everything you are, it includes your physical. All of that was summed up in this word, your body. It wasn't soul or mind. It was your body is kind of everything. And so what Paul is saying here is give everything you have to God. And he says, why? Because of all that God has done for you. And what he's referring to there is Jesus. Everything that Jesus has done for you, when you understand that, give the totality of who you are back to him. He said, let it be, uh, let, uh, let them be a living, uh, excuse me, let me start over here says, let them be a living um, and holy sacrifice, the kind you find acceptable. So in other words, as we go through our life, we do the things that we do. It is meant to be an act of worship, giving it back to God. Everything we do is what Paul is saying. So there's no part of our life that is off limits to reflecting Christ in this world. And he says, that's the kind of life that God will find acceptable in our lives. As we are being transformed into new creatures, when we bring him everything, we don't hold him back saying, you can have this part of my life, God, but you can't have my work life. You can have my marriage. You can't have my finances. What Paul is saying, give it all. Live with all of who you are as a sacrifice to God. And that's why he says, this is the way to truly worship him. That's that idea of the ministry of the Levites, of the priests. They gave everything to take care of the temple. That's how we are to live. We are to give everything we have to God. And he says, that's why he says in the next verse, don't copy the things you see around you in the world. And then he says this, he says, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Left to our own devices, our mind is corrupt. And apart from God changing it, we are going to continue to lead ourselves down ways that reveal our human nature, our brokenness, our sinfulness. And what Paul is saying here is, let God transform you. In other words, you aren't going to do it by just trying harder. You're not going to do it by attending more Bible studies. You're not going to attend it by, by simply doing things. It is something that God brings to you as you re release and yield yourself to him. That's also part of worship. The Levites yielded themselves to God and God provided for them as they took care of the temple and before that the tabernacle. God provided for them. That's what Paul is saying we are to do. As we give everything we have, God will provide for us. And what God will provide is the renewing of our mind, of changing the way we think about our life, the way we look at our world, the way we look at the relationships around us, the way we look at our world, our, our work life, 
the way we even look at our finances, all of that will change as God renews our mind, renews the way we think. That is what truly becoming a disciple of Jesus Christ is about. It's about being changed to reflect God more clearly. I think of that verse that Paul writes about how we, we are just kind of veiled and being changed from, from little bit to little bit more and more into the image of God by his spirit, it says. That is what we are to be about. Because you see, you and I have been called as high priests for God in this world. We are to represent God to this world and invite people into life with him so that they can experience the renewing of their mind, so they can have the totality of their life given over to God. That's our call. That's our call as a follower of Christ. From the day we are born to the last breath that we take, our lives are to be given over to Christ. And so I invite you, as we are winding up Lent and coming up on Holy Week, what does it look like in your life to yield every part of the totality of your body the totality of your life to Christ. What's one thing you can do? Say, Jesus, I want to make this difference. Help me do this. And then step into that. Step into that. Don't let the things of this world distract you to get you off track. But rather, let God transform the way you think so that you can more clearly reflect him. That's our call as followers of Christ. And so I invite you to do that. Lord, you have called us to be like you. When we look at you, we think, oh, we are so far short of that. And we are. But Lord, you're not asking us to become savior of the world. You're asking us to yield ourselves to you and to allow ourselves to be transformed by your Holy Spirit. I ask that you would do that in my life and in the life of all who watch this. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Many of you perhaps know that the tragedy that, uh, that struck the Faith family this last week with the death of, uh, of our covenant partner and elder, Pat Nolan, and the wife of our ministry partner, uh, Gio, Gio Sine, was mildly passing away in an accident this last week. If this is you're hearing this of the first, for the first time um, and you're gasping right now, then I invite you to go to um, Faith's YouTube channel and just watch our, our service from yesterday, um, uh, from this last Sunday, so that you can kind of see as we try to process that a little bit together. If you're wondering about what's next, um, we will be having a service uh, for Pat Nolan at some point in the near future. The details haven't been finalized yet. Once they are, we'll, we'll, let, we'll get them out to you and Gio will be returning with Magali back to Guatemala um, at some point in the near future as well. So continue to uphold them. And if you would like to uh, support Gio in uh, some of his financial uh, expenses um, in terms of just getting her remains back and then having a, uh, a, a service in Guatemala City, um, if you go to our website, faithchurchmn.org uh, and go to the Gift Plus button, one of the options will be for Gio, and you can donate there, and that money will, will go to help him kind of take care of some of the costs associated with, uh, with Magali's passing. 
We also have lots of things that are coming as we're right around the corner from uh, from Holy Week. We have the men's breakfast coming up in, in early April. They'll take a look at the, the email that comes with this, as well as the dates for our Holy Week services and knowing that, uh, that Pastor Kurt will be preaching on Easter. So just some of the things that are coming for us and wanted to let you know about some of those. So I encourage you, don't let this world beat you down but rather be transformed by the renewing of your mind. For that is what God desires for you and for me. God bless everybody. Have a good week. Bye-bye now.